bad things. Fine as hell. Thick as fuck. Oh my god. That's my baby, Caroline. Hello, hello everyone. What's good? What's poppin'? It's your girl Caroline and I'm back again with another detailed start to finish in-depth real-time journey of a wig customization video. So today we're gonna be working with this beautiful, and I wanna say beautiful, I mean beautiful, kinky curly wig from Ali Pearl. This is a 5x5 HD closure. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys everything I did from right out of the pack to getting it to looking like it's coming right out of my scalp. You already know I like to just show you guys exactly what goes into these customization processes because a lot of the times how the wig is looking on my head is definitely not how it looks right out of the box. But with that said, sit down, relax, get you a snack because as always, it's a long one and let's get right into today's video. Starting from the top, here's how the wig was looking right out of the box. It is a kinky curly wig. I have the fullest density, 250% density, and this is a closure 5x5. Five in my opinion, I feel like it was giving more like 4 to 4.5, but we ain't gonna talk about that. So the first step on my customization checklist is to bleach the knots. For my beginners out there, if you can see right at the root of the wig, those little black dots, those are the knots from the hair being tied into the lace that I'm going to be using bleach to turn into a blonde color so it looks more like it's coming out of your scalp. It just makes those black knots at the bottom of your lace less noticeable, giving a more scalp-like appearance. So to bleach the knots, I'm going to be using this Blonde Brilliant bleaching powder. I used to use the standard BW like regular bleaching powder, but I recently invested into this one, Just Free Formula. And something about this, it doesn't like start to bleed too much into the hair. About two little spoons of it. And to mix it, I'm using a 20 volume developer. And the reason why I'm using 20 volume is because this brand specifically tells you to use nothing more than 25. It says like 15 to 25. I tried using a higher volume developer and it did not work that well. I feel like if you're using regular, like not this one, like a standard powder, I suggest using 30 as a beginner. But I do have other videos where I use the regular type of bleaching powders if you want more specifics on that. Anyways, so now I'm just going to start pouring in my bleach. And my thing with pouring in bleach is you don't want to, not the bleach, pouring in the, the developer. I try to make sure I'm not pouring in it too much because the consistency of your bleaching solution really matters. Because you want it to be liquidy enough for it to like hit those knots. But at the same time, I don't want it too liquidy where it's like running into the hairline. This, this texture, like, it's a little bit too thick for me. Like, you don't want it to be cakey and chalky. And I feel comfortable making this more, like, on the liquidy side. Not liquidy, but more, yeah, more liquidy than I normally do because this, like I was saying, this bleach itself, it doesn't, like, bleed that much. It's spreadable, as you can see, right? Like, it's spreadable. At the same time, when I flip my brush over, it's not dripping, but also it's still creamy enough where it's not dragging through. Before I apply the bleach, I'm gonna put some hairspray on the front of the hairline. And this is just to help me push back the hair because I don't want to mistakenly get bleach onto the actual hair. So you like, you have one of those wigs that have the baby hairs in the front, push that hairline back, okay. Cool. I found it easier for me to just have my wigs laying face down, you know, AS up, just like this. To apply my bleach, I'm using a wooden popsicle stick. You can use anything you want to help you apply. Just make sure it is plastic, wooden, and not metal, because metal does react with the, you know, the bleaching process. So yeah, I'm just gonna go in and start applying that bleach. I go in with a light hand at first when I'm doing this, but at the same time, I still put a little bit of pressure because I need this bleach to cover those knots, not just sit on top of it. Before, I used to just like let it sit on top, but I realized to really get those knots, especially their big knots, you gotta push it in just a little bit, which is why it's important to make sure your solution is not too runny. So even though you're pushing the bleach in a little bit, it's not gonna start dripping into the hair. 
And don't be afraid to take a stop moment real quick before you go too far. Flip the wig over and just make sure you're not pushing way too much. Okay, good. But you see how like the bleach is properly covering those knots? Like it's not just sitting, like I can see that the bleach has covered the knots. That's what I want. Now I have, I'm flipping the wig over. You can, can y'all see how y'all can still see like those little dots a little bit on the base versus right here where those dots are completely covered. So I'm about to go back in and push the bleach more because I really got to make sure it's covering up those knots. Like not just down there, but like it's swallowing the knots up. That's how, if you feel like your knots don't be bleaching, it looks, it looks the same. That's probably because you're not putting enough pressure to push the, to cover up the knots. As you can see now, everything is very much covered. You see that? That's what we want. Get some foil paper. And I place that under. And this kind of just helps like fasten up the processing time. So oh, before I put the foil over, I just, I never give specific times because every wig it bleached differently. So I always say like, just put a 10 minute timer and keep checking the hair every 10 minutes to see how it's doing. Cause you just want these black knots at the base, like at the root to go from black to, I would say like, for me, I like to go for a very like yellow blonde color, yeah, a blonde color. If it starts to look orange, let it go a little longer. You wanna go from black to orange to blonde. My 10 minute timer, and I'm gonna come back and show you how it looks like in 10 minutes. Okay, y'all, so it's been about 15-ish mm, minutes. As you can see, the knots, like the bottom right there, it's more like an orange color. And if you're kind of scared, you can go ahead and wash it out now. But I like it to get to more of a yellowy blonde color, not like a penny orange. I'm going to come back in another 10 minutes or so to check on it again. And now it's been like, let's say it's been a good 30 minutes. And I don't like to do past 30 minutes because if it's not bleached after 30 minutes, just go ahead and do it again. Because I'm always so scared to damage the hair. Because that's how you get all that extra shedding in your frontal and giving your lace and stuff. But this is pretty good for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and wash this out now. And you know you're not to bleach for sure when you turn the wig over and it's like, you know, it looks like this. It's no longer dark, it's giving bleached. So to wash out the bleach, I like using this neutralizing shampoo. I like to get a neutralizing one because it has basically this like active, basically it has this like active ingredient in it. So whenever I have washed out all the bleach, I know I've washed it all out. It goes from a pink foam to a white foam. I'll show you what I mean. Because you really got to make sure you're washing out all the bleach. Like, I just realized the reason why I was getting so much shedding from my wig sometimes is because I wasn't really properly washing out all the bleach like I thought I was. So just going with a little bit of that neutralizing shampoo. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And I also make sure now I'm washing through the hair because I used to just like wash the lace out of bleach but not realizing that the bleach is dove running into the hair too when I'm washing it so I make sure I'm washing the hair through as well because that too can lead to shedding you see all that pink foam that's how I know I mean I don't know if y'all can see it but that's literally all the pink, all the bleach that's in the hair now. So after I completely washed the bleach out of the hair, meaning the foam was turning white, that's how I know it's been gone. Here's how the lace was looking. As you can see, those dots are bleached, okay? Black dots where... I feel like my bleaching skills have really improved because I focus a lot now on pushing the bleach through the knots. 
after you bleach your knots you're going to probably have to use a tinted shampoo to help just cancel out the orange and yellow colors that are left from the bleaching process i like to use either blue or purple shampoo sometimes both just kind of depends on how the lace is looking i'm going with the blue shampoo first because blue helps cancel out orange on the color wheel and i use a good amount of it because i really want to get that pigment all of the knots and i really scrub it into it i leave the shampoo on for about five minutes i don't like to leave it on too long because sometimes it can give the lace a bit of a tint if i'm not like you know properly washing it out if i leave it on for too long after I washed out the blue shampoo, I looked at the lace and it was having, I could see now a little bit of a yellow tint as well. When I'm talking about the tint, it's kind of just like where those, like the color that's coming off at the base of the hair because it's no longer black. So it looked kind of yellowish now. So I went in with the purple shampoo, which canceled out the yellow color. Let that sit for another five-ish minutes and just washed everything out and make sure again, I'm thoroughly washing the hair as well out. I've recently got some questions asking if it's necessary to do this step after you bleach your wig, the knots in the wig. And I feel like yes and no. No, because you can still go ahead and install the wig without doing this step, but it's gonna have like a very orangey, yellowish overtone and your scalp is more of a neutral color. So you're gonna have to probably use concealer or something to cancel that out. I just feel like doing these steps and canceling out that orange yellow color you get kind of just makes it look more realistic in the long term. So you don't need to do it if you don't have these shampoos around, but it is gonna help the wig look more realistic if that makes sense. After thoroughly washing out all the shampoo from the hair, I'm just going ahead and adding some conditioner just to help add some moisture back to the hair because I just used three very stripping drying shampoos on it. So adding a little bit of conditioner after you shampoo your hair really goes a long way in the quality of the hair after all. I let the shampoo, I mean the conditioner sit for probably up to an hour. Sometimes I can let my conditioner sit overnight if I have the time. Let that sit, wash it out, and we are ready to pluck the wig. Okay, here she is on the mannequin head, ready to be plucked. As you can see, the hairline, right? It's like, it's got a little bit of pre-plucking going on. As in like, you see how it's like nice and thin a little bit up here, and it gets thicker as it goes back in. But for the look I like to go for, I like a more plucked look, so I'm gonna be plucking it. And normally, I like to pluck my hair when it's dry, not wet. But there's, you can do both ways. The pro to plucking your hair when it's wet is that the knots come out a lot easier. But at the same time, it comes out a little bit too easy. You can definitely over pluck and you just can't tell how thick your hair is when it's wet. But I'm being really lazy and I'm not trying to wait because I want to finish this install in one day. So I'm going to go ahead and just pluck it wet. Luckily for me, the wig is already parted in the middle. I like to always have my hair parted out in the middle. When I'm plucking, this just kind of helps me, one, not prevent plucking the middle part. Once you pluck the middle part, something about the wig, it just doesn't look right or the same. So I always make sure to know where the middle is so I do not pluck directly in the middle unless I'm trying to, like, you know, make it thicker. I mean, space it out. And second, just to help me work in sections. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just pushing the hairline back. My hot comb just to help me see the knots and just see exactly what I'm working with. And since it's a little bit pre-plucked, I'm gonna pull out to the most thickest part of the hairline where it starts to get thick, which is like a little bit up here. I never pluck in the big, I never pluck in front of the hairline. And that's just for a couple reasons. One, to help me not over get an overplucked look. And two, also to help me preserve my baby hairs because sometimes I pluck way too much and I realize I don't even have any baby hairs to work with when I'm trying to install the hair. Going in with my slant tip tweezer. This is my Revlon Diamond Series. I only use these tweezers, they're my favorite. I like to get a good amount of tension, so I'm pulling the hair back with one hand and pulling it forward. It's just got everything nice and pulled out so I can really see those hairline strokes I wanna create. Cause it's like a slant tip, the tip pointing, I guess, forward. I just start and I just do like in a pulling back motion tweezer and pull the hair out from the root. Puck skip pluck skip like i'm skipping a gap of hair in between and i work my way down the line And 
And when I'm plucking, I'm not, I'm making sure I'm not plucking in the same area. Like I just went all the way down and plucked this row. So now I'm taking my tweezer higher up and plucking the hair in between this row. And I'm trying to see like pluck, skip a line, pluck, skip a line, pluck, skip a line as I'm making my way down. Plucking the same spot is how you get bald spots. And remember to pull the hair out from the roots. That's how you get a clean looking pluck. If you're leaving those little knots behind, like the hairline just looks really fuzzy and you can't even tell you plucked the hair. You know you're doing it right when you see the little blonde knots that you bleach coming out. If there's no blonde knots coming out, then you're not pulling it or your tweezers is not sharp enough. And I just like to work my way back like about, I don't know, an inch and a half up into the hair. You don't have to go all the way back into the hairline. Sometimes when the hair is wet, I can't tell if I've plucked too much or not even enough. But that's okay. It's always better to under pluck before you install the wig. And then once you pluck it, you can tweak the hairline some more. Like you don't have to achieve for a perfect pluck before even putting the wig on. Because you can never put the hair back once you take it out. So it's better to under pluck and then do some more tweaking once you've, you know, installed the wig. Anyways, now just brushing everything back forward. Repress the hairline back. All right, pushing the hairline back. And for the front, depending on how pre-plucked it is, I go in and do the littlest. Honestly, that's a lie. I, I feel like I still be over plucking the front, so I'm not gonna touch the front. What I wanna do is go in between these gaps up here, not down here, up here and just kind of like create a little more gappage. Like it's looking a little too dense for my liking. So not down here, preserving those, going up here and just creating little gappage, little small spaces to give that look that I'm going for. And as you can see, it's looking quite pretty plucked to me, but then again, it might be not even that plucked once I install it. But I feel like the hair, because the hot comb is like fairly dry, so this should be true enough density. I'm just trying to see where else needs a little bit of a space created. But let me stop before I start doing too much. But yeah, and that is, there you go. And that really just took me like 15 minutes. This is why I love me a good closure. It's so fast. Closure is 30 minutes tops and you're done. Now I'm going to do the other side. <laughs> now that I'm done plucking for closures what I have to make sure I do is this last piece of hair before the track starts like the track is right here I like to just part that hair out and press it downwards to make sure it covers up that track. Especially since I think I wanna do a flip over kind of look. 
that kind of just helps to give more of a frontal illusion. So I'm just pushing this down. Everything else I push upward, but this part, I make sure I push it down. So, yeah. But um, here is our fully plucked wig. Okay. Y'all understand how pumped I am? The fact that it's still day one and I'm about to install this wig. Like this is why curly closure wigs are my favorite. Closures, love them. They're easy to work with. Curly hair, you don't have to style it. Like, you feel me? So now before I put the wig on, I'm going to tint the lace. Even though this is an HD lace, meaning like it should like melt into your skin a lot easier than regular lace. I still always find it necessary for me to tint the lace unless like the company is like specifying this is like a specially colored lace that's for my skin tone. A couple of time it still just needs a little tinting. I'm using my Maybelline Fit Me Foundation in the shade 356 Warm Coconut. And this is my exact shade match. I either will use a shade lighter or darker. If it's like a lace, usually like I'll go with a shade lighter if it's a lace that's really dark so that the light, the, the light foundation shade can help lighten it up. But with HD lace, typically it doesn't really have much of a tone to it. And if it's transparent lace, I'll use a shade a little bit darker because transparent lace tends to have like a white cast on it. Transparent lace is honestly best for those with like, like really light skin, fair tone almost. Caucasian-y tone skin. Don't take that personal. I feel like but everybody, all skin tones, HD lace is the way to go. Secure my little straps in the back. This is just to make sure it fits in my head the right way. I'm gonna put on a wig cap. And the wig cap is just to honestly protect these braids to keep them fresh longer. Cause it's always getting caught on the clips. So I just like to have it like pushed back like behind my hairline so that way it's not like showing right directly under the wig all right make sure you got all your clips on the wig secure this one has a clip in the back i don't really clip my sides with closures so that way it doesn't like fit weird because sometimes depending on the size of the closure it can fit my hairline weird here's how the closure is sitting on my head i know some of you guys are always wondering what do i do about the sides of the wig and it's sitting pretty decently. It fits around my ear. This is a medium cap size. If you feel like the wig is like fitting kind of funny on your head, then maybe the cap is just not the right size for you. Before I lay down my lace, I always like to make sure I cut off the little thick pieces of lace on the side of the closure. Those pieces, I don't know what they're there for, but I know I definitely do not lay those down because they do not lay down. To lay down my lace, I'm using my Ebon Lace Spray. Love her, she's the goat. And this is like more of a glueless hold. It's not a glue, it's like literally just a hairspray with a stronger hold. I like to use this or the Bedhead hairspray. And for, I guess let me answer some quick questions about it that I've been getting. Um, No, you cannot do this on vacation. Like, like if you wear this on a yacht or you jump into the water with this, she's gone. The wig has left you in the back. Question number two, how many days does this last? I know if I'm really like doing like, like maintenance and being very cautious of how I'm washing my face and all that extra stuff, this I can get about like two, maybe three days depending. Everybody's different, like depending how sweaty, how oily your head is and how it works for me. Two days honestly is the most. Three is like, I, I don't know how I got three. I probably wasn't like working out or anything. This does last up in a sweaty club though. Like I wear this out to the club at night. It's hot, it's sweaty, it's packed. I feel like my wig is sliding off and she don't move. She don't move. This is this is water, this is a water soluble product, meaning it comes off with water. Actual glue, you have to use alcohol to get it off. So with that said, if it touches water, it's gonna start, it's gonna start melting apart. Okay, so I gotta say. So it's more of a temporary hold. I'm a girl who likes, I don't sleep in my wigs. I like to take them off at night. Cause I don't know, my head gets hot, I get hot. But at the same time, I guess for those of y'all asking how I reinstall my wig, since I'm taking it off at night and I'm not sleeping in it, the shape and the form of the wig is maintained. Especially with a closure, it's so easy to put it back on. Like I literally just put it back, spray, and you know, it's good. So I feel like I don't have a hassle putting my wig on every day. I, don't, I honestly don't wear my wigs 
every day unless I'm filming going somewhere most of the time I'm either wearing my real hair or I'm just wearing a hat but yeah that's my little spiel on it it has they have a, they have different versions of this I have tried the black one I feel like I'm not a fan of the black one too much it has too much of a residue in my opinion but it's probably kind of know how to work with it that well I just like to use this one she's great but apparently the black one is supposed to be like waterproof I doubt that because it's still a soluble product but it's supposed to have a much stronger hold so try out the water try out the black one if you're looking for a stronger hold but yeah I hope that answered your questions if you have more of course comment down below but let's get into this and stuff so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna cut the lace I'm gonna use my brow razor to cut the lace I feel like using a razor to cut off your lace versus anything else razors are the best thing to cut it off only problem is that I'm a klutz and I always cut like my head and stuff so I sometimes will just cheat and use cuticle scissors but still nothing beats a good razor cut and that's because the razor basically it cuts the hairline in a jagged type of motion like it gives like a jagged raw edge to it which just really like lets the lace lay so naturally on your head so I'm just going in and trying to cut off as much lace as possible. And if you're wondering, how do you cut your lace off exactly? Y'all know I got y'all. I have a very, ooh, my contra trying to fall out. I have a very detailed lace cutting tutorial. So y'all should definitely check it out. But yeah, I just try my best to follow. All right, cool, cool, cool. You can see it's already melted into our hairline. Love that for her. And now as far as laying it down, I'm just gonna go in and spray as close to the edge of the hairline as possible. With this product, it's best to spray, focus more on spraying on the hair than, I mean on the lace than the hair. So I spray and I use my fingers to just like, you know, gently tap and distribute the product out. Now the piece de resistance is this blow dryer and rat tail comb combination. This is what I feel like gets it to like really lock and melt onto your hairline. Like I see people who just like spray it and like put elastic band on and let it like air dry. No babes, I feel like you gotta use a blow dryer and let it just set, you know? And of course this is to help push and flatten out the lace, make sure everything is like laying flat to your skin. I use the hot setting, but the lower power. So not, not this, but this. And I just be pushing it in. And now just to make sure I got all the edges, I just like to spray the end of the comb like that. And just tap the edge once more. Just to make sure I didn't like miss a spot. I don't want no lift in there. He's melting into my, 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 my head. All right, now let's make some baby hairs. I don't like to stress myself out with my baby hairs. I do the same thing every time and I like it like that. Cause I feel like sometimes you can have a good install and the baby hairs just mess it up. So I like to just do a minimal amount. I'm gonna just pluck these baby hairs pluck the hair down just a little bit because y'all remember I purposely did not pluck the front of the hairline because I wanted to preserve enough baby hairs for myself so I'm just going to lightly pluck through these just to thin it out first I'm going to spray it down with the same Evan spray just to help them lay downwards and then I'm going to just cut them down I usually like to just start like right at my eyebrow and I cut it down in a diagonal motion. Yeah, because I almost just cut off my brows. Just curl her with my little mini flat iron that I got from Amazon. And I like to just make sure I'm doing a nice tight curl now without burning my forehead off. So I'm gonna try using mousse today to lay my baby hairs. So normally I like to use Ego Styler but I don't feel like picking it up and I kind of just want to go try something different today. I don't mind using mousse. I just sometimes have a hard time getting the baby hairs to lay down with mousse, but I'm just going to try it out for today. I don't know 
know how people curl their baby hairs so tight and tiny without burning themselves. Like maybe I'm just missing something. Like I need a tutorial on that. Like that's what I need. Cause I can't even, I need to get, make my curls tighter, but I'm always burning my head. So I just like do like a weak little curl. Like if y'all know how to do that, tell me. Or maybe I'm just clumsy, I don't know. Make sure you're swooping your baby hairs in a way where it, it swoops over the track right here just to help cover it up and stuff. My baby hair is my first attempt always has to be like the rough draft. Sometimes I gotta like let them sit and set a certain way and then like re-swoop them. Okay. This is good for now. I'll probably go in once the baby hairs have set to tweak them some more. But for now, this is good. I'm gonna go in with our elastic band to hold everything down. Now to define my curls, I'm gonna be going in with a spray bottle of literally just water, y'all. I promise you, a lot of times you don't even need that much product to get really nice, juicy curls. You just need water and it's about your technique for brushing. Cause y'all always ask me, Caroline, what do you use your curly hair to get your curls like that? If I brush my hair it makes a big difference. Like it literally can make the curl pattern look a whole different way. First, I'm just trying to make sure I'm cutting the hair even. Get my water bottle, saturate the hair up, gotta make sure it's nice and wet. Once I do that, get my brush. I'm using a paddle brush. Ooh, that's wet. And I'm brushing. And I just keep brushing until I see the curls start to clump together and form little ringlets. Like, you gotta be brushing for a minute. And the way I brush, I make sure I'm scooping the hair through the brush. They can all like, you know, form up. You see that? Yeah. And I keep brushing until the whole section is looking like that. And then I scrunch the hair to help really promote those ringlets. You see, you y'all see that, period. Sometimes, depending on the kind of hair, the ends are really like, the ends won't curl up the way you want it. And you just gotta go in and chop those scraggly ends off and rebrush. Okay. And then brush again. There you go now. Hey, you see that? Very, very nice, very nice. And scrunch. And since I want a flip over look, I make sure I'm brushing the hair to the back first and it's when it dries, that's when I'll like flip it over. That's how I get that look. You see that? You want to keep brushing it to you get the ringlets to form. Like I don't stop till I see the hair clump up together. And once you get the hair to clump, you gotta make sure you're not running your fingers through it, cause now it's gonna like dry in a frizzy different type of pattern. And y'all saw how these curls? I don't know if y'all remember. These this is not how the curls is looking right out of the box. Like most of the time, the curly hair, that's not how the curls look out of the box. You gotta put that work into it ready to get that look so whenever you guys trying to want to fight me in the comment section i bought that wig and it looks nothing like that that could be true but at the same time maybe it's just the way you're brushing out your curls all right and now key part i let the hair air dry just like this do not run your hands through it be careful how you're like sitting because you really just want the curls to dry in this wet form but dry so that way it's defined you feel me so I literally just leave it alone like this. And I'm gonna come back to y'all once it's air dried. Okay, so the hair is not fully dried yet. It's been about two hours now, but it's almost there. 
but I usually like to do my little tweaking when it's not fully dry. So that way, you know, I just like to make sure like it's gotten to a good volume and the curls are set. Now I'm just tweaking the baby hairs a little bit. Okay, now for this rest of the styling, y'all see what I'm saying? Now I can just like easily push the hair around to get that flip over look that I want. And as far as the, so I'm gonna, this is why I use mousse for, just for tweaking, cause it's not like, it's gonna help the hair will dry faster. So I do water for the tweaking parts. Like this part got all fuzzy since I was moving my hair around. If I use water, it'll just take a lot longer for it to form. So I just like to use mousse just to help recurl certain part. And wherever I cut, I add mousse to recurl the ends. Okay, guys, look. So it's how the hair is looking like. It's basically fully dry. As you can see, the curls are nice and defined. So I like them. And I just separated them a little bit. Just know this hair will get very big if you play with it. Sometimes I best to not play with it, but it's so hard. This is such a cute and just a really fun look. Like, I love it. Yeah. But yeah, that was basically it. This was honestly not that bad it was super easy all i had to do was define the curls and as you can see i look cute but yeah and that's really it thank you for following me on another journey for once this time guys it's not 3 a.m in the morning it's actually 11 so progress but thank you guys again for watching this video i hope i was able to teach you something help you out on your wig installation journey and i hope you just enjoyed watching me work with this wig but i'll see you guys in another one like always make sure you like comment and subscribe and peace out girl scouts good bye